so let's talk about the shapes okay so the silhouette which I'm gonna enjoy doing for my own sake is is gonna be you know that's what I really love about Bluth um, silhouettes is they're very very readable um, in terms of characters attitude because of the obviously Bluth worked a lot with milk Carl so you know this is actually a lot bigger but I'm not going to religiously stick to my silhouette. I'm doing the silhouette more for myself. But by doing the silhouette more for myself, I think I'm starting to have an impact on some of you uh, to actually start considering these things. Okay, so this is actually in line with this. Okay, because there's a person who's not even a library member and she's not online today. And I always call her the lovely, because it's such a nice name, Hervonia Baker. And she got so inspired by these looking for the silhouettes and she's working on her drawing that she's vowed to do, a, I think, 150 different poses where she's examining the silhouette. And it's had quite an effect on her drawing. Um, so now this kind of goes in line with this. Look at all the hidden triangles. OK, when I find the silhouette, OK. I've mentioned the power of the triangle before, right? But I'm going to mention the power of the triangle again. So even though my silhouette is kind of off as I'm doing this, I think to make this a learning um, experience for you, I'm going to I'm going to start talking about things like triangles and the power of triangles, and then we're going to examine the triangles within this drawing. So let me get this red here so if we look we can see that there's you know i'm going to show you loads and loads of triangles but we can see there's a triangle here the head is more or less a triangle okay this is a triangle this is a triangle this is a triangle okay now the negative space within the characters is triangles the negative space within here is triangles okay the negative space within here is triangles then we've got this kind of triangle for the hair and the negative space within here is all triangles. So triangles are, you know, super, super important. And I'm going to show you some of you have seen from my Instagram posts that I've been posting. Um, uh, sketches I've been doing of hairs in a sketch pad. And I'm going to show you even from how in non cartoon like live action referencing triangles are super important so even though like now let's talk about this character's construction okay so the silhouette was for myself obviously it's somebody with their hands on their hips right so let's say okay there's gonna be like a sphere here okay like a a circle kind of thing here like this but now we're gonna start building triangles within there okay so we got a triangle of the eye she's gonna be one eye width apart we got another triangle of the eye which is going to come here because she's kind of angry now okay we got the nose which comes here which is on you guessed it a triangle okay now the mouth is almost like a little kind of triangular shape okay so we have that there right and then we've got like the expression okay so arguably like even off the edge of the mouth i'm gonna make this kind of squarish triangle here because you'll see how that'll turn into a bottom lip okay then we've got um this which could be perceived as a big triangle broken up into little triangles right so we have this here now we've got a triangle here like this and then we can break this up with more kind of little triangular shapes i'll go in and draw this in nicely for you later but if you just see me all the time making really good hand-eye coordination drawings, uh, you won't learn anything. You'll just watch me draw, okay? So this thing here now, we've got like a triangle in between there to connect the eyes, okay? We can also put a triangle of hair coming down like this, okay? Search the triangle, okay? Search for triangles. That's my tip for you like anybody watching this stream that's going to want to go away um, and take anything away from this, okay, is next time you look at a drawing you like, search for triangles, okay? And then we balance the curves with the straight. So again, we're going to come down here. Now, 
imagine this like this whole head is one big triangle but we're going to come down here and we're going to put triangles okay and we're going to divide these into other triangles so i'm really kind of now bluth would not or whoever drew this frame pomeroy bluth or whoever they would not have necessarily gone and instinctively said i'm going to build a character out of triangles but this is they would have intuitively done these shapes and i'm just showing you just how you see how i'm breaking up this one big triangle here like this how you know it just happens to all go inside a triangle because that's just the way the way this stuff works um so even the bow okay so we've got a big shape so i'm gonna put a big kind of like triangle here which kind of sits now he wouldn't have drawn it and said i'm gonna sit it in a triangle the way i'm doing it okay but i'm just showing you how in how subconsciously it just all happens and it all just happens to be like so now we got another triangle up here like this okay then we're going to divide this and look what do we got here we got another triangle here like this right so then we're going to come around here like this and we're going to create a triangle here and we're going to create a triangle in here like this and we're going to go right this now when i draw it in and curve it up and hide hide all these triangles with nice lines and things you won't even you know it, uh, now i've told you about it it's obvious but you won't see it if you just look at the drawing and you didn't know this stuff so now again here this this is like a circle but you know it's got a triangular feel to it like that okay and we're going to come off the sides here like this now what shape is her top half okay it's just going to be like a triangular shape coming down here like this and now how does the sleeve sit inside there we've got another triangle just like that can you see so the triangle sits in there like that so this whole kind of talk that i'm giving you i'm really showing you the secret science of shape simplification um at its highest level which is what you know bluth disney uh is because again now, now here the skirt would be here now the drawing kind of ends there would be another triangle you see and then we're going to look for the arms of the character you know you can go and put all the anatomy in there but essentially you can see that you know even the, from a negative space point of view it's all just triangles so i'm just going to go and put this here like this and then even the fingers okay this is kind of like a triangle the negative space from that little finger and then we're going to put a triangle in there and we're going to split it in two like that so um you how do you avoid tangents so that your drawing and silhouette appears better um i guess it just be becomes with you know you want to you don't make things symmetrical and you I guess it, it becomes intuitive from the more you observe with life and you know the thing is is this is quite a formulaic way of drawing but then what stops it from being formulaic compared to what I was talking about the animaniac stuff and all that you know TV stuff when I was telling um, eccentrics um, about her croc character is having the an anatomical knowledge to then uh, Th then although use these simple shapes but then be able to um put an anatomical references in there which is what you're going to see me do see at the moment you've seen me do everything in this very crude harsh triangle kind of way and all they we, we can see the drawing we can see what it is coming out of it you know if we would just leave it at that it would not be as great a drawing as what it is because it is you, you, we're just looking at the drawing in its in its structural essence which is all these triangles and things but now what i'm going to do on this pass is i'm gonna go in here is that the shift key no that isn't okay i've got to get used to this new wacom is that the shift key no that isn't okay is this the shift key yes that is okay right so i'm gonna just make it a little bit smaller put it in there make the lines a bit more manageable 
So now we're going to kind of see, which is the save, that's the save, okay. We're going to kind of see how to add these little nuances to make the drawing um, less, uh, more appealing and less formulaic. Okay, so you've seen the, sh the, sh the shapes, the kind of shapes, basic shapes that I'm using. And now we're going to go in here and, and start drawing on top of these shapes and putting in little things. So here obviously is the angry eyebrow, which is going to be coming straight up like this. And we're going to use that to curl in to the upper eye. Okay. Now this is good old school bluth you know, old school design. So I'm fattening that. Now I'm not going to count how many lashes she has because I don't think even the animator really cares. But they've kind of bunched it because what happens is when this way they didn't care about maintaining form and volume on eyelashes because the, the quivering, trembling eyelashes actually gave it more life, uh, like twinkling lashes in the light. So now we're going to subtly work the curves against the straights here. So we're just going to come around there for that eye there like that. Now, now look how beautiful this works. I'm going to come and make this crease in the nose like this. And then from that, I'm going to, I'm going to, there's an invisible line here, but they're kind of using it as a different color. And I'm going to come and push that into the cheek like this and continue it out like that. So that gives it like um, that gives it a little bit of expression, and then I'm going to come out here and put another line up here like this, and this one we'll worry about that later. What happens with there? Now the eye is going to be up, and it's going to be like an oval. It's going to kind of echo the shape of the actual eye. So we're playing with the same kind of oval. Then the iris is very thin and the eyeball is very big which gives it this mouse like effect and we're just gonna I'm just gonna just black this in so you can see how that works and we've got a square um, shape for the for the light which is kind of cool okay now the pre the next eye I always like to do my eyes together okay we're gonna take that triangle thing right but now Charlene watch this is going all this way okay but the eyelash is not going to go that way the eyelash is going to counter it and go the other way to give it like dimension okay so this is this is what stops it from being formulaic stuff then we're going to come down off hair like this and the nose okay my nose construction wise was a little bit off we're gonna rather than just make it a circle okay we're gonna this is what we're doing we're taking the simple triangles but we're giving shapes these kind of shapes non-uniform um, uh, shapes to kind of give it the effect that that's a nose okay and it's not just a Mickey Mouse oval um circle kind of thing and again i'm just gonna gonna be kind of careless with my line here i'm just gonna block this in so there so there we have the eyes which are giving us excuse me while i just get a little comfy in this chair um now the brow okay we're gonna come off here and we're just gonna come in and off there to give the character because the character doesn't really have very definite eyebrows which is another cool thing all right now we're literally gonna come up okay now this is a very very typical blue thing so i'm gonna have to um get my now which one is it? it's the hand tool or rotate tool i'm gonna have to get this here so he gives it this really nice kind of um complete curve of the character just completely coming all the way down there like that okay so he's just completely coating the character with it like in a in a solid shape then up there we're gonna create little bits of hair okay to give the character a feeling 
to kind of soften that up. Now the nose is going to sit up here like this and we're going to have another kind of crease here and another line which comes here and I actually this if you look at my ground hopper character it's straight from this blue kind of thing with the nose coming like this now again here we're not just going to come straight down like this okay we're going to come up and away like that okay and my mouth is going to be in a slightly different place to where I put it but it's going to be the same deal because we're going to want this thing to have some d dimension in the snout so this is going to come up so again the triangle shape and then a slight smile here like this now in line with this okay we're going to have like the cheek which comes off like that now we're going to come over jut this out jut this this way look how we're curving this okay and then we're curving this the other way to give this remember how i said that initially it was there so it's gonna be here like this okay so why i did that was because okay now she's having it the other way like this one okay two three we just give it like this little kind of fur thing in there but it's kind of like a shape going this way and this way to give it that dimensional effect okay to stop it from looking flat to stop it these are the little nuances that these guys have with their drawing that they do also intuitively okay which uh which a lot of cartooning um no i don't want to i don't want to do that i want to have the rotate okay which a lot of cartooning tends you know especially today because everything is made for software with these really graphic um, just simple graphic shapes using the software and um, without being disrespectful the people today just can't draw um, like they used to people today do not have these kind of drawing sensibilities that are working in the 2d animation circuit certainly there are some people who are extremely high level uh draftsmen working in animation so i'm not saying that nobody does but it's just um these kinds of sensibilities have been lost um in in today's uh 2d scene because of the heavy dependence on um using illustrator packages um and creating simple shapes that are going to be morphed and, and designed so you see these kind of designs everywhere i'm not going to spend time trying to make a nice line on this let's just burn through this right um let me just because that that little thing is annoying me so let me just do that okay so now we're going to come off the sides and we're going to do okay so she's got like two little whiskers here so we're going to come off the sides and make these look a lot nicer these bunches here so again we're going to kind of soften the shapes by rounding these triangles okay and we're going to come in like this so as i was saying earlier um the sensibilities of this kind of subtle drawing is no longer in demand in the industry today as they're depending a lot on pre-programmed uh two-dimensional software shapes and these kind of things these kind of little subtleties are just not no one cares okay unless you're doing a hand-drawn animated feature now um, and the people that do draw like this are the people who dis are at the very top working on the cg movies um so that you know they'll do the amazing sketches like you see even though i don't like these movies let me get one thing straight the draftsmanship is amazing in the concept art for example zootopia i think it's one of the most awful garbage movies i've ever seen but the concept art and the drawing and the illustration of the is of the highest level of the character design the people who drew and designed it same with big hero 6 another movie that i just could not tolerate i had to watch it in three different stages on an aeroplane i just couldn't stand it but the um the the when you look at online at the character designs the draftsmanship is is some of the very highest you're ever going to see so 
there are people out there that have these sensibilities, but they're not working in 2D, which is the great irony. Okay, so um, now we got a big triangle here like this, right? And we're going to cut that triangle into little triangles. So I want you to envisage this kind of shape, okay? So just watch how I kind of make little triangles out of a big triangle. So the first one is going to sit here like this. And we're going to have this come up here and we're going to kind of cut into there like that. I'm being quite careless with my line because I want to speed things up. Then we're going to do the bigger triangle, but we're going to kind of like, again, build around it. Okay, like this. Just going to come up here like that. This is a typical Bluth thing. Bluth loves to, uh, you know, you look at his old dogs go to heaven and his other characters he really loves to give them these uh very you know i don't even know how to I, I would just call it the hair bunching okay so again this i've been quite careless with that okay so this is gonna curl around here and i'm just gonna give it a rush i'm gonna rush and start using this kind of cleanup line to to speed through this so that's essentially the character's head okay and it is kind of cut off like that, which is kind of cool, actually. But then up here, you, you're you going to kind of have this thing, actually, which I've done. I've placed a little bit. It should be at the back. So I'm going to make mine a little bit wider. So actually, this thing should have come up to here. And then this goes like this. Okay. So it's easily fixed if you treat it just like one section like this. Right. And this is a lot fatter on the original but i'm gonna leave it as is i've made my point so now up here we're gonna kind of curl these lines okay so now i'm just gonna speed through this okay so we're gonna curl these lines and we're gonna make triangles out of this thing okay so again here we're gonna layer this all right so we're gonna come around here like this and we're going to just come up and over like that and then you remember this shape goes along the back like this so it's one big shape but we're going to sit that in there and we're just going to kind of have that and I've got it. you always marry the lines up okay don't don't try to not do that because it's going to uh, if you don't and again what i've done here which is slightly different is is this is not such a big triangle it curls around like that i think as i was teaching you about the triangles i exaggerated it just too much okay so you see how this kind of contouring layers the drawing and it gives it perspective as if it's going in the distance like this so it's really clever how he does that to be honest with you just using simple simple shapes so this is pretty much as i have it to be honest with you so i'm just gonna come in here and just bring this down and around okay you can tell i'm rushing now i don't want to i don't want to i think i've kind of covered everything that I need to cover and I'm just kind of finishing the drawing for the sake of finishing it now because the rest of this is just super super easy stuff which just you know follows along this kind of thing and if you look here the negative space there's a triangle here okay again I've stretched this out a little bit too much as I've tried to go over these triangles that I've been explaining to you but you know as long as you're like 80% accurate it's okay you know the goal and the objective of doing this isn't to um, isn't to copy the drawing 100% okay it's just so you can understand that and look for shapes and then apply that stuff in your own work okay now this is what I was telling you about Charlene we got a deltoid hair we got a bicep hair Okay, we got a tricep coming off here, and we're going to come off here like that. So to avoid these things from looking formulaic, you're going to put these kind of anat anatomical references in your drawing. So there's going to be here, it's going to be here, it's going to be here, here. We're just going to come off the edge there. 
and this kind of again again like we're not just gonna go like this okay we're gonna cut in and around like this to give this thing some contouring okay so we're gonna come around there like that and we're gonna come down and then we're gonna square this off why because we want to bring it to give it some contouring okay so we're gonna square this off like that these little nuances are super super important next time you look at a drawing okay that you think is simple okay and then you know just look at the little nuances and if you see them then you know that that drawing is not simple that drawing is actually really really masterful because the person who's done it um is really really on the ball with their um understanding of those kind of shapes and things like that one thing i did miss was the little kind of tongue which goes in there something that bluth always does so then again here i'm gonna rotate this around and we're gonna do again here so here we've got like the shoulder and the elbow so look how we kind of give it that that feel like that and we're just gonna come off here you see one of the things is tempting for me which i actually in a way in some ways i find doing blue stuff really easy but in other ways i find doing blue stuff harder when i'm copying it is because i'm i this is so close to my personal preferred style of drawing the, the drawing the, the style that i like to do in that when i look at this i'm i'm really not wanting to look at what i'm doing so i'm slightly off because i'm just drawing it from my own intuitive suggestions going oh yeah this will go like this 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 will go like that so funnily enough i'm less accurate with this one than i am with some of the anime which is a lot more unfamiliar to me because i'm just assuming too much <laughs> when i'm doing this drawing okay so the um the little fingers coming here like this now we've got the thumb okay which is just a suggestion like that and we're going to come in here and just put two little lines there to give the effect of the hand resting in the garment and then what we're going to do here is we are simply going to just frame the back like that okay so again i feel that since it's the last line to make i can make it a little bit nicer okay there we go so if i lose the construction okay you can see how we now have um a drawing that um looks like a nice uh disney drawing disney-esque kind of drawing uh of of the character but hopefully you've been able to see that the triangles and all those kind of things um are uh or what was utilized to put it all together so um amb is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for you know of all the books i've read of all the other online tutorials i have seen this was the missing key every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like, I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about this animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody 
who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry, so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so. Are you going to join the library?